Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks, and you're checking out a massive tutorial for ADSRsounds.com. In this video, we're going to be recreating a patch. I got a good amount of requests or questions asking if I could do this. I've used this sound uh, probably a good three or four times in some other videos, whether they were mixing tips and tricks or uh, just general you know, uh, tutorial videos on YouTube. So I thought I would remake it for you guys or show you how I made it at least. It's this blue track right here, and it's titled, if you can see this, uh, Lee JP 8000. And it is a reference to the Roland JP-8000, of which um, I have one, and I made a patch in Massive and a few other soft synths that sound pretty close to what uh, to some patches or presets that I made, or settings that I made, rather, on the Roland JP-8000. So let's listen to this little demo real quick. And again, it's the blue track right here. <laughs> All right, so you get the idea. It starts out with the, uh, I showed, I highlighted the uh, lanes or the different tracks of automation here. This first one is the cutoff or macro. Uh, it's the cutoff filter, but it is the macro one I have set up. It's called cutoff. So you can see that moves as it plays, right? It's going up. And then this green one right here is attached to the second macro, which is kind of my stereo voicing. So as the cutoff filter opens up, the sound gets bigger in the stereo field with the unison engine inside of Massive. All right, so that is the sound. Let's actually dive into recreating it now. So you could use a few different wavetables for this. You could use the virtual analog pulse width modulation wavetable, or you could use square saws, a uh, combination of the square saw one and two. I use a combo of kind of all three. So the first one, I had the uh, pulse saw. And for the tune, you're going to keep it at zero for this. And the pulse saw, we're going to turn all the way down. Pulse width, we're going to have in the middle because we're going to modulate some stuff. I'm going to keep the amp up. All right, then let's activate oscillator two and we're going to do the square saw two. Again, you could use square saw one of uh, the, the virtual analog. It, you just want that big saw sound. So we're going to down tune this to negative 12, so an octave. I'm doing that because the. Uh, the whole Roland JP-8000 thing, it, uh, the synth, it has this these uh, special oscillators that make, makes creating super soft sounds incredibly easy and quick. But it, it has these different voices for each of the uh, kind of these different stacks of sounds. And it helps when you're doing it in a synth like Massive or a synth like Silent even or Serum to have a, a, an oscillator that is, you know, there's pitch differences. It's not, not all tuned to zero or positive 12 semitones or whatever the case may be. So now I'm going to go to oscillator uh, three and let's just activate that right now. And I believe I had this pitched up to positive 12. I just want to hear this real quick. Yeah, I did. So back in oscillator two now, what we're going to do is we uh, we want to keep the position more on the saw side of things, but I might introduce just a little bit of the square element just to make it a pinch more interesting. I'm going to turn the intensity down a little, keep the amp where it is. Now in the third oscillator, we're going to keep the position pretty high up towards saw again, maybe introduce a little bit of a square. But this one is a square saw one, so it's, it's a little bit of a different wavetable, but not a huge difference. Intensity, we're going to go down to about 55-60% because we are going to modulate that with an LFO later. And then the amp, I'm going to turn this down a little because I don't want it as loud. So now you should have something like this. Okay, so anytime I try to recreate a like proper super saw, unison, hyper saw type sound and massive. I like to think that there are three different stages to the detuning unison process. There's the oscillator level, there's the voicing level, and then there's the modulation level. So those are the three that I, I kind of created in my mind. So oscillator level, we're gonna detune a little bit of this, just a pinch. So we might go positive, negative, positive, and then maybe negative again. All right, so, the, so we have a little bit of detune going on. Now I'm going to add a little bit of bright noise, just a little. All right, so let's go to the voicing tab now because we're trying to recreate a, a super saw unison type sound. It makes more sense to get the voices in unison sounding good before I go and filter out a bunch of the frequencies. 
All right, so that being said, I'm going to jack the voices up to eight. And we're going to turn the pitch cutoff on. This this unison on a spread, for those of you who don't know, this is basically like your voice's detune type uh, function for a certain synths. So we're going to take this value down to about 0.30 so we can move the slider out further so we can get more of a musical kind of a detune sound. <laughs> All right, now let's turn on this pan position. So full stereo would be either uh, inverted, but this side's inverted over here, and then this is full stereo. So nice and wide, but I don't want that at the beginning. I want to be able to modulate that, because sometimes you don't want, or I don't want in productions, I don't want the sound to be that, that huge, because it's really huge in the stereo field. So I'm going to do a macro here, and we're going to call this uh, stereo, because I need this to be modulated later. And then speaking of our macro one while we're here, let's actually just take the vibrato out and we're gonna put, put this onto our non-existent filter, but this will be our cutoff filter. All right, so now we have. And I'm gonna add a little bit of vibrato, slow, not super fast vibrato, it'll help with the detune sound. All right, so we've done three inst or we've done two instances of the detune vibrato type effect, unison type effect. We did it at the oscillator level. We did it at the voicing level. We have the pitch cut off. We added eight voices of unison, and then I'll lump in the vibrato into that whole kind of section of it. So let's go to the filter now, and we're going to select just a basic low pass four filter. Uh, or turn down the resonance just a little. All right, now let's go to our envelopes. This is whatever you want it to be, however you want to play it, but I'm going to get closer to the one that I use in the original sound. I had very little attack or no attack. I had this level down, I had the decay down, and I had the release around halfway. All right, and then I used envelope one kind of as a filter envelope, so kind of a short, shorter plucky sound. So I had the level pretty much all the way down, the decay all the way down and the release quite low. I have this level down on the attack level. So I use this to modulate the filter to make it a little bit more explosive sounding. Because then this shape is opening up the filter. All right, and then to warm it up, I believe I had a uh, bit crusher on it just a little bit. Okay, so let's go to the effects now. Now in the effects, I had the reverb in the first slot and the dry wet was pretty low, the size was up and then you can density and color to taste. All right, and then I added a little bit of chorus. So I guess I should amend what I said before. So when I'm doing detune unison sounds in massive, and I'm trying to get that big super saw type feel, because uh, it's a little bit hard, it's harder than other synths. What I'll do is I'll look at three different or four different levels, I guess, of where I can add that unison detune super saw type feel. Oscillator level by detuning, the voicing level by adding voices of unison using the pitch cutoff and the pan position, and even lumping in the vibrato into that. And then we're going to modulate a little bit, but also the effects. An effect like chorus, it adds voices. So, uh, you know, it's adding like a, the, the, name, the reason it's called chorus is it's adding, you know, it's hearkening back to choir voices. So I'm going to do chorus ensemble for this. Now for the dry wet, I'm going to have it about 20, 25%. The rate, quite quick. Uh, offset, we're going to push the offset because it sounds a little bit more musical to my ear. And then the depth up a little. <laughs> I'm gonna crank the dry wet up just so you can hear this how 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 powerful this effect can be in massive. Right? It's getting nice and wide now, it's getting even wider. And let's turn our stereo macro up. So 
So we have a nice wide sound right now and massive. So let's go to the EQ. Might turn up the, uh, let's turn the bass down a little bit actually. We're gonna turn this boost up a little bit. All right, so then finally, the last thing we have to do is we're gonna add some modulation with some LFOs here. So go to your fifth LFO, and you're gonna have the rate unchecked or un unsynced. So it's kind of free running. We're gonna turn the X fade all the way up to a sinusoidal curve, turn the amp down a little, and now we're gonna modulate the pulse width of our first oscillator. We're gonna modulate the intensity of our second oscillator. And you can see I'm doing the direction I'm going in. Uh, if you're unsure of which way I'm going, if you're new to Massive, just have the bright green side of the depth on the right. I'm moving upwards with my mouse. All right, then we're going to go do the uh, third oscillator, and we're going to modulate the intensity as well. <laughs> All right, so let's go to our sixth LFO, and in this we're gonna choose a uh, slightly uh, different shape, just in that we're actually gonna keep the sinusoidal curve and the, uh, the saw curve here. We're gonna keep that the same, but we're gonna keep the X fade in the middle, so now it's a kind of a combo of the two, or near the middle. So the rate, we're gonna go for a nice slow rate on this, turn the amp down a good amount. And what we're gonna do with this is we're actually gonna modulate the pitch of our oscillators. So I'm gonna go maybe up to point 20 for this first one. We're gonna go, uh, maybe point 10, 10 to 15 for this one. And let's go actually downwards with this one. So that is pretty much the sound. It's a good sound. You can turn it into a pad really easily. You can do a lot with it. Uh, I can get that. If you guys want to see that, uh, I'm going to finish up the video with throwing in the modulation. Or the automation, sorry. So I'm going to hit A on my keyboard. I'm going to go to Massive. I'm go, going to go up here where it says Cutoff. And now we should have, if I turn this on because it's I duplicated the track, here it is. So it's just modulating the Cutoff up. So it starts out. All right, so now I have the stereo pulled up as well. So we're gonna keep this kind of there. Let me just ramp up a little. And then as it gets to this section, we're gonna make the sound super stereo. So let's listen to that now. All right, and then finally, I'm gonna throw on the LFO tool and a compressor I had that's kind of clearing out of the way of the kick, so let's look at those. I have the LFO tool doing some side chain compression at a half note rate, so let's listen to this. All right, so that sums up that sound, guys. If you have any questions or comments, let me know below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Like I said at the beginning of the tutorial, I'm Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.